Hello, photography students. This week we are talking about overall photographs and why they're important when it comes to the sequencing of the shots that you take at a crime scene. Remember, when you take photographs on a scene, you're creating a permanent visual record of the scene. The future viewers of these photographs, so witnesses, jury members, lawyers, judges, other investigators, they're going to be depending on you to capture a true and accurate depiction of the scene. And what that means is that you are tasked with this very, very important part of crime scene investigation, okay? Without the crime scene photographs, how can we show someone who wasn't at the scene what the scene looked like, its orientation, where items of evidence were located? This can be really, really important to a case. Okay, so you could argue that photographing the scene is one of the most important elements of crime scene investigation. So remember that you're telling a story and you want to make sure that you don't leave out any key important parts of that story. And overall photographs are that first step. And so here's a definition for you. Overall photographs are images that show the general layout of the scene. So what I'm going to do this week is walk you through how you take good overall photographs that capture the entire scene and show important relationships um, between certain areas of the scene. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Now when you start taking your crime scene photographs, you want to start by photographing a data card or um, your textbook calls it a photo identifier card. And this tells the viewer all the important information about the images that they're about to see. So it'll have the date and usually you'll put in um, the time that you started the photographs. Okay, for this example, we used October 2nd and 0900 hours. If you're comfortable with military time, I suggest you use it um, in class for CJ and CI. It's usually what police departments will use, but if not, you know, you can use just normal civilian time. Uh, so that would be 9 a.m. Okay, the agency. Now, normally for me, right, I would write, you know, um, Phoenix Police Department, but for your classes, I suggest just using whatever class you're in, okay? So this is just an example, CS Photo 1, uh, winter term, or summer term, or spring term, whichever term you're in. The case number, or the DR number, departmental report number, um, indicates what case these photographs are for. So obviously, um, if you are working an actual police case, it would have a number that's given to you uh, by people who are working the case. But uh, for our purposes, you can just make up a case number, okay? And the photographer, okay, that's where your name goes. And the location, so the location of the scene that you're working. So this is just a made up one, for example, uh, 123 Main Street. But for your photographs, you can definitely use the location um, of your house or the location of the scene that you're working. So this form is available in doc sharing for you to download and use for your assignments. So before you start any photographic assignments, this is going to be the image that you take, okay? You're going to take a photograph of this form right here with all the information on it. The, the first photograph that we took showed the street sign, right? In this next shot, you can still see the street sign. It's over there on the left-hand side of the screen, right? So the viewer knows exactly where we're looking in relation to the photograph we just took. Okay, so now we're focusing in on the residence that we're going to move towards. Here's a shot where we've moved closer to the garage. Now you can see an address plate below that little uh, green looking cross. Okay, um, we still know where we're oriented. We know that that street sign is back over to the left because we've overlapped key features of the shot, right? So here we are moving closer to the residence. Here's a close-up. You always want to be sure to take a close-up shot of the address plate if possible. In this situation, it was above the garage, um, but sometimes they're on the curb uh, next to the sidewalk or on a mailbox or right next to the front door. Uh, wherever the location is is fine. Just be sure that you take a close-up shot of the address. This can be really important for serving search warrants uh, because search warrants are very specific usually as to the location where um, you can search and where um, the scene can be investigated. 
navigated. So you always want to be sure to show the address of the residence that you're going to be photographing. Remember that you want to overlap key features in your overall shots, okay? And you're going to hear me say that a lot throughout this uh, particular video lecture. We know that we were facing the garage. We can see that the front door is to the left of the garage or to the east. And we know where we're oriented because we see the address plate, which was the close-up shot that we took just a second ago. Okay, so it's important to overlap those key features of your photographs. If you have a key element um, that can show your viewer where you are in the scene in one shot, try to overlap that in your second shot. Take another shot shot showing that key feature uh, but leading the viewer towards the area that you want them to look at. So we know we're moving to the left. We know that we're now focusing on area to the left part of your screen because that's the next sequence of shots that I took, right? Here we are and we're all the way over to the left now. We Now we still know, okay, the address plate that she took a photograph of is on the right hand side above the second door of the garage. We know that the street sign is to the left of here, okay, because we have an entire sequence of shots that's overlapped those key features. And now we're moving towards the front door. Now in this shot you can see the front door clearly and you can see it's in the center of the image so the viewer is probably thinking we're going to walk through the front door, right? Which we are, but remember that the person viewing your photos wasn't there, okay? They didn't see uh, the specific, you know, alcove that you're going to be walking through. So you want to be sure that you show them specifically the areas that you're walking through. So now we're getting even closer to the front door. We can see a broom on the left hand side. We can see the orientation of those big large boulder rocks um, down next to the walkway. We can see that there are little grooves in the cement there and you never know. Those could end up being an important part of your scene. Maybe there's a casing that fell into one of those little grooves or maybe a piece of evidence is going to be found behind one of those large boulders. You, ne you never know. And as a crime scene photographer, you're usually going to be the first one that walks through a crime scene. Okay, the maybe the first responder showed up. Hey, there's a dead body in the backyard. That's why we called you. Okay, but usually crime scene photographers are the first one to walk through a scene to document it because you want to document the scene exactly as it was found when you arrive before you change anything, before you add evidence placards, before anything's collected or anything's moved. You want to take in situ or as is photographs, okay? So it's really important when you walk through the scene for the first time taking your overalls to make sure that you thoroughly document um, the scene just as you found it and sometimes that can mean taking upwards of thousands of photographs and because we have a digital camera now we don't have to worry about the cost of film or anything like that right we have our flashcards that we can use over and over again so you really want to be sure that you take as many photographs as you need to orient your viewer okay so now we're walking towards the front door here we are with the open door. Now I always like to take these shots because it's very disorienting for a future viewer to look at a doorway and then all of a sudden they're inside. They don't know, did, did you turn around? Did you turn to the left? Did you turn to the right? You always want to show this shot showing the door open so that they know what part of the residence they're going to be looking at once you step inside. Now in this image, uh, have a look at the background there. You can see a picture frame hanging below a uh, speaker of some sort. There's a curtain on the left hand side. Okay, so if the viewer is paying attention to these elements of the scene, once you walk inside, you know exactly where you're looking. Okay, so you want to be sure overlap the key features of the scene. And in this situation, that's the picture frame and the curtain in the background shot, right? Now we've moved a little bit to the left, right? We are now looking a little bit, we've, we've, we've centered in on that uh, doorway to probably a closet or something right there, okay? And we're turning to the left. We're showing the uh, future viewer where we're located in the scene and we're turning to the left. Now, 
in the image previous to this, you saw a little edge of that carpet. Now you can see the carpet, okay? So the viewer is sure, okay, we were turning to the left, now we've turned completely to the left, and we're looking into this room with chairs and a poker table. Now, in this example that I'm giving you, this is not the room that we're focused on. Now, remember, in a crime scene, usually you don't know which room is going to be the specific area where the most evidence is, or maybe there's evidence all throughout the house. Maybe there's evidence inside and outside. Now, the sequence that I'm going to show you on how to photograph a interior room, that would actually be repeated and repeated and repeated until the entire house was completely photographed. Okay, so your overall shots can actually amount to hundreds and hundreds of photographs depending on how large your crime scene is. Okay, so keep in mind that the sequence of shots that I'm going to show you would be repeated throughout an actual crime scene, but for um, time's sake and for um, learning the actual sequence that you use, we're just going to photograph one room. That's what I'm going to be asking you to do um, in your assignments for this week. So just realize that this is one small section of the house that we're photographing, and in actuality, you would have to do this for every single room in the residence. But for, for the purposes of this class and for this exercise, we're just going to focus on one. So this room, the poker room here in the house, is not the one that we're interested in. So we are going to continue turning to the left. Okay. Now, if we c turn completely to the left again, we'd have made basically 180 degrees, right? So we would be looking again at the front door that's over to the left, but that's not the area that we're interested in. So we're going to continue moving on down the hallway to the room that we are focusing on for this assignment. Okay, so now we, we're looking north, we're looking down the hallway. You're going to see an overlapping sequence of shots. We can see three rooms on the right there. Now we're showing the viewer there are three open doorways. Which one are we going to be focusing on? Okay, not the one that was closest to us because now we've moved past that. Not the middle door because we've now moved past that. We're focusing on the room at the end of the hallway. So you can see from this sequence, from the, these pathway shots, we know exactly where this room is located in the house. Through the front door, turn to the left, turn all the way back around to the north, all the way down the hallway, it's the third, third door on the right. So without a crime scene report or without uh, any kind of narration, if you just looked at these sequence of shots, you would have a good idea as to where this room is located in the scene. And that's what a good crime scene photographer does. A good crime scene photographer should be able to show you images without words or explanation, and you should be able to see exactly where something is located in the scene and what it looks like. Now, when you reach the room of interest, what you want to do is you want to four-point the room. And I'm going to explain to you what that means in the next few sequences of slides. So let's look at what four-pointing a room can do. This is an overview top of the room that we're going to be photographing. So imagine you're a giant, okay, and you rip the roof off of a house and you peer down from the top looking down. Okay, we call that a bird's eye view. So this is a bird's eye view diagram of the room that we're going to be photographing. When you first walk in, you're going to be in, for, for this room particularly, you're going to be in the southwest corner. Okay, so what you want to do is orient yourself so that you're looking to the northeast, okay, the opposite corner of the room, and you want to take a series of photographs that I'm going to show you. So you want to work your way around the room from each corner of the room. So this room has four corners, so we're going to take pictures from all four corners. So the first shot, we start at the southwest corner, we're facing towards the bed, towards the northeast corner. Okay, and we're going to take a sequence of shots that I'm going to show you. What you then want to do is work your way around the room. So you're going to physically move from corner to corner photographing into the room, photographing to the opposite corner of the room. Okay, This sequence of shots is going to give you a complete overview of every surface of the room Okay, because they're all overlapping. There are a couple different ways that 
crime scene photographers take overalls. Some stand so that they're directly in front of a wall and then they take a series of higher and lower shots showing the entire wall. Um, that can be a little disorienting, especially if you don't overlap uh, sections, key elements of your photographs, okay? For me, and for a majority of the crime scene specialists at Phoenix PD, four-pointing a room um, keeps the viewer more oriented in your scene and you still capture all of the surrounding surfaces that you need. So let's look at some examples of this. Okay, so we're standing in the southwest corner of the room, and this is the normal photographer view. Okay, what that means is I just took the photograph, walking into the room, standing at a normal height. I held my camera up and took the photograph the way I normally would take a photograph. I didn't strain upwards. I didn't bend over. I'm not hunkered down. Okay, this is just a normal view that you would take just standing, taking your camera, bringing it up to your face, and taking a photograph. Okay? That's the first image. The next image that you want to take, still standing in the same place, is the ceiling view. Okay, ceilings can be really important, especially in violent crime scenes, if there's a lot of bloodshed, um, especially if either um, a, a firearm was used or a blunt object or a sharp force object. If blood was let in the scene, then you definitely want to be sure that you get some ceiling shots. Now, in this situation, obviously there's nothing on the scene because it's, uh, it's a mock scene, right? It's not a real crime scene. But even if it was, even if there's nothing on the ceiling, you want to be sure that you photograph um, the ceiling shots to either show that there is something there or to show that there isn't, okay? Because we're documenting the scene as we found it. So you've taken the normal photographer's shot first image when you walk into a room. You've taken the next shot, which is the ceiling shot, and then to finish off the corner, you want to take the floor shot. Okay, so we're standing in the same location. We know that because we can see the items in the room from the same direction, right? We can see the bed, we can see the side table, we saw the ceiling fan and the photographs and the earlier shots. So there are three photographs that you take from each corner of the room. The normal photographer view, the ceiling view, and the floor view. We're going to move on to the northwest corner, okay? So just to the left of where we were standing before. Here's the normal photographer view, the ceiling view, and the floor view, okay? Now, if there's an obstacle in your way, like there is in this situation, like a bed, okay, you want to position yourself as close as possible to the next corner. Um, some crime scene specialists will climb up on top of the bed, which <laughs> is fine. Um, if there is not, you know, trace evidence or DNA um, situations to consider. Um, but if there is an obstacle that you can't physically get on top of, then you want to be sure that you're standing as close to it as you can to photograph back the way that we came. Right? So here's the normal photographer view, the ceiling view, and the floor view with my little pup who has decided to come and play with his ball <laughs> in our crime scene, which can happen, okay? Um, there can be moving elements of your crime scene. So um, especially in some of the houses we see, they have a lot of animals uh, that, you know, have free reign of the home. Um, so realize that this uh, is actually pretty realistic <laughs> when it comes to crime scene photography. You never know what's going to be moving in and out of your scene. Okay, so we're moving on to the last corner. We photographed from the southwest, the northwest, and the northeast, and now we're photographing from the last corner of the room, the southeast corner. And this is the normal photographer's view, the ceiling view, and the floor view. So the key concept to remember when you're taking your overall shots is that you're telling a story. And you want to be sure that you overlap key features of the images so that your story stays consistent, so that your story explains to the viewer, the future viewer, where we moved throughout this crime scene and what the scene looked like. 
So four-pointing a room is an effective way to make sure that you capture all surfaces of the room, like you just saw. And you want to remember to include ceiling and floor shots in your overall images. Now, what I'll see a lot of first-time photography students do is they'll take their four-point images and then say, oh, I, I forgot to take shots of the ceiling. So then they take a sequence of shots that just show you a white ceiling, maybe there's a vent involved, <laughs> maybe there's a, a ceiling fan, but it's impossible to tell where they were standing when they took that shot, okay? So it's important when you take your overalls that there are overlapping key features to make sure that your viewer knows where you're standing. Okay, so you want to be sure that you include the ceiling and the floor shots, but do it in a way so that your viewer knows where they're standing in the room. See you guys in the classroom.